yeah, my name is uh, Staly Jordan. I'm the director for product information technology at NOE, and I support our business units with. Uh, uh, let me get back here. Yeah, thank you. So yeah, I support our business units with um, digital transformation and um, uh, cloud adoption. And um, we started our journey with AWS about a year ago, and that's what I'm going to cover today. So NOE is a multinational company, and um, we um, are located here in Houston. We have about uh, 35,000 employees, and we have 17 business units. We, up on the blue side, you see we have our rig equipment uh, business unit or business segment. They make and uh, produce land rigs, offshore rigs, as well as uh, marine construction. For example, back in September, we got an order for w constructing one of the largest uh, offshore windmill installation vessels. We also have our aftermarket service for the rig segment there. And on the red, you have what we call the wellbore segment, which is all about uh, lowering the time to oil. And um, they help you with optimizing drilling as well as uh, drill pipe. In that segment, we, for example, also have uh, what we call the wired pipe which is a pipe where you can uh, collect the data all the way from the drill bit. So it's like IoT down hole. And then bring it up to, uh, the, um, to the rig as well as send it over to the cloud. So on the blue, on the green, we have uh, our completion and production segment. Uh, can I get this back? Sorry, I wasn't here on the preparation yesterday, so. Yeah, thank you. So on the green side, we have the completion and production segment, which um, is everything from fracking to offshore flow plane production and storage and offloading units. So it's everything from fracking onshore to large capital products projects on uh, offshore. From the digital side, we have uh, multiple digital products, and this is our Max platform, which is our main platform for providing conditional-based maintenance to our customers. We, for example, through this platform, provide uh, TCO programs to, for example, TransOcean, to be able to lower the total cost of ownership for both us and the customer. And uh, we're doing extensive development on this platform and have heavily focused on the edge because we make assets and we make products and of course the edge is very important for us and then uh, we have the ability to transmit data and do analytics in the cloud another proven product we have had for the last um, decade is our well data real-time platform that has collected uh, real-time drilling data and well information from uh, land rigs and offshore units all over the world for over a decade we also, on the edge, have our Novos platform, which is a drilling automation and optimization platform where third parties can be able to develop and run applications. We have around three dozen third party applications developed for this platform, where third parties can uh, create applications to be able to do an autonom autonomous drilling as well as optimizing the whole drilling process. And again, it's about time to oil. You want to reduce that as much as possible. So prior to the cloud, which was uh, about one year ago, so we started looking into this in uh, June, July, we need to do something with all our digital products. They were hosted in multiple on-prem data centers. We had technical si silos uh, throughout the business segments. We had a ton of technical debt, also created by the downturn in the oil and gas industry, and uh, that affected us as everyone else. We had a need to uh, be able to consolidate all this. And uh, but in June 2018, I attended something called the Innovation Partnership Program together with some of my other colleagues. And we learned about uh, disruption. And um, we brought that back to our company and started talking about it. And um, one of the things we learned is we need to change. And 
earlier today, Arno had a question to uh, everyone about what will be the disruption in uh, the oil and gas industry for the next year or so. And you guys, about 250 of you answered that question. You started on the top, there were 50% that said startups and small companies that are cloud native will be the biggest disruption. On the, and the number two was 19% said you wanted uh, or you believe that new companies outside the oil and gas industry was going to be the disruptor. And then on the third place, cloud uh, mega vendors would, uh, was on 15%. And then you had 7% on internal teams in existing companies that would do the disruption. So that me that's actually very right. Because if you try to disturb wrap the mothership of a large organization, that's a stable system and it will really crush your foot. So how do you change that? You need to change mindsets, you need to change practices, you need to look into new technology, and you need to build a business case. And that's what we started looking into. And uh, the cloud was out there, the cloud was new to NOE. We had some presence from the enterprise side in another cloud vendor than AWS. We had widely used uh, usage of uh, software as a service from large business application vendors worldwide. We did have some uh, expected cloud benefits like everyone else. We had faster time to market, we had increased productivity, and then uh, ability to serve a burst in demand. Uh, also in oil and gas, you may want to be able to scale down as well when things change. And then of course we wanted to change some of our data centers and move that into one place and be able to have the data in one place. So we created this team about one year ago. Uh, we called it NOE CDS Mode 2. So CDS is just an internal name for customer data services. This is very product focused, not for the inside internal applications. We created a small cross-functional team, startup in October 2018. And in this case, we used the waterfall metal method towards we needed a minimal requirements to be able to run this in production. On top of that, we have maintained an ISO 27001 certification for more than uh, six plus years, which is required by one of our products we already have in production. And while we move to the crowd, there is 114 controls within an ISO 27001, and in those 114 controls, there is 14 categories, and one of them you can point to the cloud provider, the rest you still need to maintain yourself. In this case, we scraped most of the things we had and we restarted. Uh, we had some depth on this, having, having running in for six plus years. And uh, we wanted to have a fresh start in the cloud. So by uh, wanting to do that, we figured very quickly, if we want to be able to run this properly, we need to do everything in code. And um, the reason for that is when you start using the cloud in a very large environment, you need to have control on what is running there and to prevent cloud sprawl, for example. And uh, this will also automatically inventory your environment and be able to uh, see what is changing. So we ended up with an environment that looked some, something like this. It still looks like this, where we had a product approach. So we had multiple accounts per, um, per product and we integrated that with the uh, required uh, third-party identity provider from a corporate level. We integrated that with our uh, security system from a corporate level. We also was doing cost management. On the right side, we wanted to use for, uh, new technology to be able to man maintain the environment. So we used Datadog for monitoring, we had Jenkins, Terraform, Ansible, and Python for management. And then we integrated everything with ChatOps and we store all this in a version control system that also is ticketing and have our product backlog. So basically, this is the most technical side I have today. Um, then by February this year, we had a certified environment by a third party and uh, we started migrating products and that's still ongoing. But for example, our Max platform that I in a, uh, talked about earlier is now in production running on Elastic Kubernetes service and um, we're still working on moving our existing applications. 
And this brings me into my next topic, which is more about innovation and how do we use that. So AWS is giving us the ability to create an environment for more innovation between our product teams, as well as bridging the gap between the physical world and the digital world. And in NOE, we have multiple facilities that do research and development, as well as maintenance and repair, but we want to see how can we bridge the gap between what we're testing and what we actually do in the digital and be able to give the engineers an environment where they can do things like this. So in um, June, I mentioned I was um, attending an innovation partnership program, and one of the things I learned about was pipes versus platforms. So we wanted to create a platform for development, testing, and operation of our digital offerings with the necessary guardrails to be able to protect our IP, but also protect the data, and uh, but at the same time give an open platform for internal use for development. So in the large organizations, you technically, when you're going to do something, you have to request, I need this asset, I need this service, and then one month later, you have access to everything you need to do your development. What we wanted to do was to create a platform for full creation and be able to, for others to create value and also be able to bridge the uh, multiple teams in different locations as well as different time zones to be able to co-create. And um, the problem with this is not clearly <laughs> learning, it's more about unlearning, because people have habits. They want to do this the similar way they've always done it. They um, do regular tasks without thinking, so you want to have them to be able to uh, think differently, be able to use new technology, new services, look into the AWS services. In the beginning, everyone is asking, I need another server, I need another place to store my database, but what if there is some of the 165 services AWS have that actually can do this already for you and you don't have to develop it. So one of the things we started doing was from the strategic level, from the business segments, you have a where to go, which is your mission strategy goals. And then on the platform we created, as well as with the ISO 27001 framework, and uh, everything we developed for that, you have the rules, policies, and procedures. So we introduced something new in our organization where we call doctrine, and that's how everyone gonna decide and how do you take the right choices inside the cloud. So the way we introduced the doctrine was doing training. So we sent 25 people to architect training on AWS. We have had workshops, we very, focus on embedding uh, cloud architects into all the teams that are using the cloud, so we have cross-functional knowledge. We um, had a hackathon which had six cross-functional teams with uh, data scientists, data engineers, uh, developers, architects, and a storyteller. They used two days to look into three types of data sets. What's, one was uh, equipment data, one was financial data, and one was uh, sensor data integrity. There's a lot of data out there, and uh, with IoT, you need to know that the integrity of the data is correct all the way from the sensor on the equipment that we produced all the way to the cloud. And within these two days, everyone was able to create uh, machine learning models. And today, some of these models are actually put into our production model library for machine learning models, so that was great. And um, another example I want to see how we're using the cloud is in 2010, a master student, he proved that real-time video can be used for vessel positioning. So he had a, he proved in a model that you can have a fixed structure that is filming a vessel that moves into the fixed structure offshore, and he could predict the positioning of the vessel to be able to load and uh, load or cargo from the ship or put cargo on the deck. This is in 2010, which is nine years ago. And he was using C++, no G GPU at that time. He um, was able to prove this. And if you had given him these tools today with uh, video streaming and SageMaker, 
Bob Jack detection and all that, he would be able to do that much quicker. And this is pretty interesting. We pr showed this on OTC in 2010, and uh, nine years later, we're still working on visualization technologies. I saw downstairs earlier today, there was uh, other companies working on visualization and object detection, so that's pretty cool. Another way we using the AWS, which is outside hosting, is for development testing of control systems. So we worked with our control system partners to see can we do some of speed up the development testing of our control systems. So having multiple locations all over the world, you have different teams uh, creating different components, and all of them have control systems. And at some point, you want to bridge this gap between all the teams to be able to test out a fully working solution before you send it out. Uh, uh, to the production and actually going to test this software on real-life equipment. And uh, we've seen that that's one of the ways we can use the cloud to speed up instead of having multiple physical labs because everything is software these days. And at some point, you, of course, have to, to do this um, on the physical equipment, but that can be the last part of your testing procedure. So for us, if you can't fail, you aren't going to learn. And uh, Amazon gives us a very good way, a platform for learning stuff quick. And uh, you can, with a click of a button, spin up a new environment to be able to test out some new functionality. And then when you're done, you click another button, and it's, um, it's destroyed. So that's one of the ways. So lessons learned for us is that we quickly saw that we need to embrace open source and also give something back to the open source com community. We need to invest in talents. And um, what I mean with that is uh, cloud, good cloud people these days aren't that easy to get. So you need to invent identify your internal talents and train them. You also will see that a lot of people will get new roles. So you need to elevate the people you have inside your organization when you start automating their job away. That's just a fact. It will happen. You need to start embedding cloud architects all over the organization, especially in the development teams, because if not, you, you will always have the gap between an uh, IT function or um, a development function. We encourage people to attend meetups. In Houston, for example, there's meetups about machine learning, about Kubernetes, about uh, all the great and latest technologies. We challenge people and create some healthy competition. There's always a good, good uh, practice to have some competition. You just make, need to make sure that it's not toxic. And then we also let people experiment because they actually put in extra time. So our journey to um, get to uh, production is giving people the ability to have what we call sandbox accounts, where it is uh, available to do most of the things that you can do in the cloud. There is limitations around account creation and stuff like that, of course. Then once an ID or a functionality you have tested out goes to uh, one of the product teams, you can put it into the development, and it's proven into the deployment cycle. So it's going into testing and QA. And then at some point, it's released to production. So at the end, when we started with AWS one year ago, we were like, we just need some storage and compute to solve our on-prem problems. Now, one year later, we're using analytic services. We're using machine learning services. We're using multiple database storage uh, services. And um, it's been a good journey for us. And um, I would like to do a summary on this and say that we have gotten a scalable platform for our digital offerings, and it gives us the faster time to market. We have the ability to maintain information security with confidentiality, integrity, and availability. It gives us increased productivity, and it gives us an ability to serve burst in demand, as well as we've been able to consolidate one or our data centers. With that, I'm going to um, uh, have my last slide, which is IDs are open source, execution is proprietary, and that's what I believe is we have to do going forward is execute. Open uh, IDs are all over the place, and um, but uh, how do you execute and actually deliver value to uh, your customers with the IDs you get? So I think that sums up the day as well. And uh, hopefully everyone have a, had a good time.